Does the president have the stamina, physically and mentally, do you think, to continue on even after 2024? Don, you're asking me this question. Oh, my gosh. He's the president of the United States. That is, I, 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 that is not a question that we should be even asking. Five days later. <laughs> This is Joe Biden. Since the resident took office, gas prices have risen from $2.39 a gallon to a staggering all-time record high of $5 a gallon. But don't worry, Biden has a plan to lower the price at the pump. I'd like to uh, talk to you about the actions I'm announcing to bring down gas prices. <clears throat> First, today I'm calling on Congress to suspend the federal gas tax for the next 90 days through the busy summer season, busy travel season. Here's what that means. Every time you go to the gas station to fill your tank, the federal government charges an 18 cents tax per gallon of gas that you purchase. By suspending the 18 cent gas tax, federal gas tax for the next 90 days, we can bring down the price of gas and give families just a little bit of relief. And when Biden says that families will get just a little bit of relief, that's an overstatement. Penn Wharton came out with an analysis that found if the gas tax was suspended from March to December 2022, that the average savings per capita would be $16 on the low end and $47 on the high end. And that wouldn't be per week. That would be for the entire 10-month period, which means that your savings per month on the high end would be $4.70. Wow, thanks Joe Biden. And spoiler alert, because this is clearly a political stunt, Congress isn't gonna go for it. And then just watch because Joe Biden and the Democrats are gonna go on TV and say something like, Republicans voted against Americans saving money on gas. And we know this because that's what happened in 2008 when then presidential candidate, Senator Barack Obama, called the idea of suspending the gas tax as nothing more than a political ploy. And you know what? It turns out that people want to be on the side of the American people and on the side of the truth. They don't want to be for something that is such an obvious election year gimmick. They don't want to line up behind an idea that's more about trying to get a few votes than get you meaningful relief. And Hillary Clinton was quoted as saying, my opponent, Senator Obama, opposes giving consumers a break from the gas tax. That kind of attack is pretty much cliche at this point. And speaking of attacking your political opponents... I know my Republican friends claim we're not producing enough oil, and I'm limiting oil production. Quite frankly, that's nonsense. But we aren't producing enough oil. That's literally the problem. And now we're begging other countries to increase their production because Biden has done everything he can to restrict production here in the United States. From his first day in office, Biden signed an executive order to cancel the Keystone XL pipeline. He's canceled offshore lease sales in the Gulf Coast and Alaska. He delayed lease sales in New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming. He revoked a permit to expand a refinery in the Virgin Islands. And he raised the carbon tax by 5,000%. But you see, he didn't do anything to limit production. Biden didn't do nothing. And Republicans falsely claim that I'm blocking production on federal lands. But again, that's nonsense. The industry has more approved permits for production on federal lands than they can possibly use. That's a fact. So if the oil companies have more permits than they can possibly use, then what's stopping companies from using them? Well, if you're new to the channel, I debunked this in a video months ago. First, a permit to drill isn't a guarantee that there will actually be oil or gas when you drill in any given location. And second, even if there is, the Biden administration is slow rolling permits to build critical infrastructure like roads and pipelines. Not to mention the countless lawsuits from environmental groups that can delay drilling and production for months or even years. Here's the truth. Just this month, America produced 12 million barrels of oil per day. That's the highest, that's higher than average under my predecessor. 
So for clarity, he just compared the average daily production under President Trump from February 2017 to January 2021 to the last three weeks under Joe Biden. Biden is including President Trump's first year where he had to clean up after the O'Biden Obama administration's restrictive energy policy when the average daily oil production for the year was 9.4 million barrels per day, the lowest of his four years in office. And I'm not sure where Biden got that June number since the month of June hasn't ended and the Energy Information Administration hasn't even released April numbers, but I'm sure that we can trust Joe Biden, guys. I've added to that supply of oil by releasing a record 1 million barrels of oil per day from what's called the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. In other words, since we're actually producing less oil than we did pre-pandemic, we're taking hundreds of millions of barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to meet demand because we aren't producing enough here in the United States. The bottom line is we are setting records in terms of American energy production. We absolutely are not setting records. That is complete bullshit. Even if Biden's claim of 12 million barrels per day in June is real, we're still producing much less than we were pre-pandemic. Just look at the facts. Since the start of the war in Ukraine this year, gas prices have risen by almost $2 a gallon in the United States. Let's look at the actual facts. The week Russia invaded Ukraine, the national average for a gallon of gas was $3.53. And two days before Biden's speech, the price per gallon was $5. And the day he made his speech, the national average was at $4.96. So if you do the math, that's only a difference of $1.43. But the simple truth is gas prices are up almost $2 a gallon because Vladimir Putin's ruthless attack on Ukraine. The last time that the national average was at $3 a gallon was in May 2021. So unless Putin's invasion started a year ago, there is no way that you can say that Putin caused the price of gas to rise $2. So for all those Republicans in Congress criticizing me today for high gas prices in America, are you now saying we were wrong to support Ukraine? What? Are you saying we were wrong to stand up to Putin? Are you saying that we would rather have lower gas prices in America and Putin's iron fist in Europe? Oh, I see. If you criticize Biden's energy policy, you're with Vladimir Putin. Got it. So let's be honest with one another. Yeah, that'll be the day. My message is simple. To the companies running gas stations and setting those prices at the pump, this is a time of war, global peril, Ukraine, these are not normal times. Biden is suggesting without any proof, without a shred of evidence, that gas stations are price gouging. And this is nothing new. Last November, Biden asked the Federal Trade Commission to investigate anti-consumer behavior. And six months later, uh, yeah, they're not gonna find anything. But making false accusations is a great way to vilify the oil companies and deflect from the real problem. Biden's energy policies. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product. Do it now. Do it today. Yes, Joe Biden. Keep whispering like a f***ing creep. That'll convince them. Anyway, that's it for now. Be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel, and I hope to see you next time. If there is next time. <laughs>